I'm Lady Aska and today I want to show you how to create three different types of horns in the new v -Roid Studio version 1.0 from something fit for a beginner to a more advanced type. First things first, it is actually not that different than how it was before in the beta version, but a few things have changed since then so I wanted to post an updated tutorial about it. And maybe this is actually your first v -Roid experience and you only know the version 1.0 then this tutorial is especially for you. Despite the fact that we can add accessories now, horns are sadly not included in these, so we still have to create them using hair. As many, I hope they update this in the future, since horns are so popular amongst VTubers. I also wanted to correct myself from my last Vroid Studio video, where I mentioned the white background. Shout out to Wolf Saints for telling me that you can at least change the background color on the main panel to gray through the settings. It's not night mode yet, but I won't complain. Now onto our first pair of horns. Oni horns, level beginner. These horns are easy to do, even for beginners. I would go so far to say that they are the easiest pair overall, because they don't require a lot of altering to look good from the get-go. First, you'll open up hairstyle, and now you can actually make a few really cool decisions that weren't possible before. The fact that the new version divides the hair in possible layers, like front, back, side, etc., will make it easier to create horns apart from the complete hairstyle way that we had before. So let's say you wanted a set of the really popular Oni horns in the front. In our case, the front is our part of choice, and we select that we want to start a custom preset here. You would start by creating a new freehand group or using the existing one and setting up the mesh for it. This part now requires you to just be as creative as you can while imagining how the mesh would have to look like to support the shape of your horns. For example, the part where the horns are connected with the head should be reflected by the mesh going a bit into the skin so your horns will look like they're actually growing out of the head. After setting a color, preferably a specific one just for the horns, you can start drawing already. At this point, I also have to mention that each artist may have a bit of a different take on it. Some put the mesh into the right shape in the beginning, some alter it after, some just go with the flow, or a bit of all of that. You go with the method that feels the best for you. I also recommend to put the mirror option on, to see how it will look theoretically on both sides. Even though you may not use both in the end. Sometimes, if I like one side more, I use the duplicate flip trick to get my favorite part duplicated. But remember, once duplicated and flipped, the parts will not change on both sides anymore, if you happen to make a change. So wait with that till the absolute last moment if you want to use that feature. For beginners, the mirror option will be great already, because everything you change on one side will be changed on the other side too. This works for the mesh, but also for the hair strands by themselves. First, you try to get as close as possible to the shape you want. Remember, there's always time for fine tuning. Once you got the overall shape right, you can also experiment with the more detailed shape. With hair, no matter if you use it for actual hair or horns, you'll have to remember to make it long enough to get enough edit points. This is for a short strand. You see, I can't edit it a lot and it looks weird and has harsh corners instead of looking nice and round. With more edit points, I can make smoother shapes, so feel free to experiment a bit with that. With edit points, I can change the orientation of the horns to a certain extent and can shape them into totally different forms too. But in this case, we are talking beginner level. So as you may see, the horns look nearly perfect already once we started drawing. After that is done, you can experiment with the thickness and making it wider in one part and thinner in another. That is all personal preference. Try to match the horns to your preferred skin color or go for a totally different color or a texture if you know already how to use them.
but that is basically it for our beginner level Oni horns. If you created along with me, I hope yours look awesome too and you can be really proud of your first pair of horns. Now let's move on to a more advanced type, ram horns. These type of horns require you to be even more creative with the initial mesh. While in theory you just draw out the shape of the horns, the trick is to make them look organic and like actual ram horns instead of something that looks like a sticker. Here you have to work a lot more with the thickness slider and the line down here in the right corner to get the shape to what you want. Dragging the line upwards makes part of the hair thicker, dragging the line downwards slimmer. Nearly all horns will have a thicker part at the bottom and a thin part at the top, so yours should look similar to what is shown on screen here. Remember to experiment with moving the mesh and don't worry if something weird happens in between and you lost the initial shape that you like it. With the keyboard shortcut CTRL plus Z you can undo steps and with CTRL plus Shift plus Z you can redo steps. This can come in really handy if your cat dropped herself over your mouse or you did something by accident and want to go back to an old state or redo something. Overall you will just do more editing than with the Oni horns to get your desired shape but the main concept is the same. You can also see here that I added another element to the hair preset, a ponytail, from the extension tab. With the new option we can mix and match now. But as you may see my horns got saved together with the ponytail as a front preset. I don't want that. So I'll delete the ponytail and save the preset again and say I want just the front save and that I want to override the old one with the ponytail. And thus we got our horns back as a singled out preset for the front but that without losing our extension ponytail that is saved separately. Now I could add them to any new avatar and build a new hairstyle around them. With everything you learned in this advanced tutorial, you should now be ready for the next level. Welcome to the professional level. You are now ready to give multi-mesh endless a go. The beginning is pretty easy as you start by drawing longer oni horns and bend them backwards. By now, you may be really experienced at that already. But instead of continuing with the same mesh as before, you now create a new freehand group and edit the mesh to go onto a different direction, so you can place things on top. You can repeat that process as often as you want to get really elaborate endless styles. Also something that I should mention here, the closer the horns are to your avatar set, the more static they are, which is exactly what we want. In the end, you don't want these horns to hover around. But also remember, these are practically still hair. So for example, if you want to use the same trick to make horns on the shoulders, they would actually behave like hair and move with the avatar instead of being stuck to the body. The same goes for tails, wings, etc. The simple reason for this is that these are not connected to the body. We are just tricking the program by using the hair mesh here. If you happen to know more about Unity, you can import your .vrm avatar there later, don't forget to not merge the hair together while exporting, and add a connection between the horn, wings or tail that actually make them part of the body and behave on their own. I really wish I could show that too, but for some reason my Vroid Studio stops working once I install Unity and makes it impossible for me to work on avatars after. I didn't see anyone else having the same problem so I apologize for the inconvenience here. As always, I can point you to a wonderful tutorial here on YouTube that focuses specifically on this topic and may help you to take your avatar to the next level.
If you want more tutorials like this for V-Ride Studio 1.0, let me know in the comment section what you are most interested in and I may pick that as the next topic. See you guys in the next one. Hope you have a wonderful day.